In my opinion, the main purpose of cooking is for others to enjoy it. If I could get a little philosophical here, what is a child's cry without a mother to hear it? What is an amazing painting without someone to view it? What is a planet without Elon Musk to conquer it? We're making a dinner with an entire leg of lamb for my family. Welcome back to Bourdain. Everybody should know how to use a knife. Use everything, waste nothing. Let's start at the beginning. It ain't that hard, okay? Eh. I hope you're doing good. We are learning how to cook through Anthony Bourdain's cookbook, working through every recipe. I'm doing them for the first time. My name's Mitch May. I forgot to say that. We are making an entire leg of lamb. I am not even going to attempt to say that, but this is going to cook for seven hours, low and slow. And fortunately that gives us a lot of time to prep other things, as Bourdain says. I'm gonna make some mashed potatoes from Bourdain's recipe as well, a little Greek salad. We're gonna get moving. I have Bourdain's cookbook, as usual, linked down below in the description if you wanna grab it. If not, let's just follow along and get cooking. So we begin with 24 whole cloves of garlic. A little trick here I tried from Martha Stewart, kind of. You shake these things up in a container and it's supposed to break them up and make them easy to peel. Not the case for me. So I just want the traditional route, so mash them, peel them quite easily. And of these 24 cloves, we're gonna take four and thinly slice them. Just taking our time, vibing out. These are going to go in the lamb itself. Four carrots, nothing special, removed of their skins, the tips removed, and they're cut roughly in half. And now time for our bouquet garni, which you may have seen a few times by now it is parsley thyme and bay leaf all wrapped up in a cute little bundle and i actually double because i find we're going to need a lot to season this giant leg of lamb two medium-sized onions which seem to be the secret ingredient for all things that taste good and the moment we've been waiting for our leg of lamb something i learned from jacques pepin the master is to remove this area around the end of the leg because this allows us to grip the bone better and it does kind of look better for presentation another thing my culinary godfather told me is that you should remove a lot of the fat if there is a lot of fat because it does lend a nice flavor but in excess it can be a little heavy for some people. I try my best here. It's not pretty. It took some time but I'm happy with the end result. I left a little fat on there just because we need some fat of course. And now we take our thinly sliced garlic and insert it into the lamb using a paring knife or a super sharp boning knife that I shouldn't be using. We make an incision and then we replace that gap with garlic. Now we generously give this boy a massage with olive oil. Time to season. I did use some white pepper because I ran out of black pepper and I liberally go after this thing. I think it's very hard to overdo it with such a big piece of meat and we bring out a roasting pan and dump everything in there. The onion, the carrots, the garlic, the bouquet garni. I kind of use the carrots as a bit of a scaffolding and I did add some soy sauce here. A little extra umami aka glutamate can't hurt. Our lamb damn near fits in here perfectly. Now Bourdain does call for a giant vessel sealed with some type of dough mixture. I didn't have that so I just went really tight with the aluminum foil here to trap all the flavors and try to not let out any steam. That will go in the oven at 300 degrees for all of seven hours. Time to feature a comment from Maysam or Maysim. I'm not sure if that's an entire name. I apologize. They did some amazing research. A while back I got some juice on Bourdain's cookbook. Just got some juice on the book. I'm sure Bourdain would not give a it turns out this was Bourdain's intention to actually have this cookbook get a little messy, sort of show the marks of your progress, which I think is amazing. And May Sam found, he actually made this book in the fashion of like butcher paper. That is just another thing I am really fanboying about. Thank you for the comment, May Sam. Let's get back to preparing this dinner. It's been about four hours. I actually just made another recipe with liver and got demi glace all over my shirt. Regardless, let's make some mashed potatoes. Six Idaho potatoes cut in half, it's easy enough. And they will go into a pot heavily seasoned with salt and come up to a boil. While they are coming up, it's time to make a Greek salad, one of my favorite things on the planet. One whole cucumber, roughly sliced, one red onion, thinly sliced. Actually, for me, this is kind of thick, but I love red onions. And four nice tomatoes, getting out that stemmy part and slicing these into slices. That's a great description, I know. One big chunk of feta cheese. Now you know there's some salty brine in there. That's going in the salad, of course. We then slice this up roughly. I do cut them finer just to toss in our salad, but I reserve about four or five thick rectangles to plate afterwards. About a quarter cup of olive oil goes in with some fresh cracked black pepper. And I didn't have olives, so I substituted them out for some briny capers. And I glug a little balsamic vinegar and oregano. That's actually basil, but pretend it's oregano. 
We give this a stir and that is it. Ideally, this will kind of marinate overnight, but it's just gonna sit for a few hours. The potatoes are coming up to a boil. We then get six tablespoons of butter, two cups of heavy cream, and bring this up to a boil. Now Bourdain says that this will boil over unexpectedly, so keep an eye on it. Once the potatoes can be pierced easily with a paring knife, we dump them and allow them to cool. Bourdain says you just kind of tear off the skin with your fingers. Warning, let these potatoes cool a little bit because I definitely scorched some of my fingertips. Now, while I'm doing this, remember how I said that milk butter mixture tends to boil over easily? Well, it did. Pretty freaking bad. This is the after effect after removing the freaking boiling buttermilk stuff. After a little cleanup, we add some salt to our mashed potatoes and we add what's left of the heavy cream mixture. Little by little, mashing, mashing, and then adding some nutmeg because I heard that's a secret and my mom actually told me about that as well. Just a big old glob of sour cream and we are good to go with the mash. We are approaching the seven hour mark and it is the moment of truth. The reason I enjoy making food, taking something, transforming it just with time and heat, we are left with this beautiful cut of meat. It is beyond tender. We transfer it over to a serving dish. I add the carrots just for presentation and there we have it. I put this back in the oven just to hang out and then I make a pan sauce out of the liquid left in our roasting pan. Shout out to Manoli and Vince for buying me this lovely massive strainer, making my life super easy. If you'd like to donate, you can on Ko-Fi and get a shout out, but making our sauce. I start with a roux, equal parts flour and butter, about two tablespoons of each. While that's coming up over medium heat, we plate our Greek salad and get those nice big chunks of feta on there for presentation. Plate up the mashed potatoes. They hold up pretty well, I noticed. In restaurants too, you kind of just cook them and keep them warm. They ain't gonna go bad. And back to our gravy. I apologize. I didn't show adding the actual drippings, but we add two cubes of demi-glace, probably equating to a tablespoon in total, and bring that up to a simmer. I toasted up some baguette for people to enjoy with the gravy or just sop up any juice left up after eating. For a little presentation, I slice into the meat so my family can rip into it easily. Not that you need much. It is so tender and my mouth is water just watching this. It was a very good meal. I'm not gonna lie. The lamb was so tender. As Bourdain says, you could have eaten it with a spoon. It was a rough day, but I'm glad I did it. Everyone seemed to enjoy this. I certainly did. Thanks for spending your time with me. This was back to Bourdain.